Well, boys and girls and everybody in between, it's over. The first week of the XFL season has ended. We're all we're all sad now. I'm sad now. Uh, let me just tell you, uh, I'm, 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 I'm already a little angry, but we'll talk about why I'm angry in a minute. And you, and if you are a um, If you're like, I don't know, if you're somebody that's like, lives in the DFW area, and you know why, because there's a team in DFW, in the XFL, that just took an L, but that's not important yet, because we're going to talk about this first game of the doubleheader today first, um, and that is the New York Guardians, led by Matt McGloin, coming out here and just absolutely whipping up on Aaron Murray and the Tampa Bay Vipers. 23-3 to was the final there. Let me tell you, uh, I gotta tell you, not a good performance by Aaron Murray. Two interceptions, but at least one of them was not his fault. These wide receivers were just dropping balls like it was nothing. Just sad. It was just a sad state of affairs, you know, Tampa Bay wide receivers just dropping the ball. Aaron Murray getting hit off of the line, not protect him at all. Um, just tragic, tragic type stuff. Matt McGloin did pretty okay, you know, for a 30-year-old guy getting another chance in the XFL. Let me tell you, um, not a lot to go off of here. Um, Pearson got the touchdown from McGloin, the only touchdown that he threw. In this game, and he also ran for a touchdown as well, which is also pretty good. Uh, but McGloin went 15 for 29, 182 yards, not the greatest stat line in the world. And of course, the touchdown, like I said already, and he ran for one as well. Not um, the atmosphere out there in New York. Um, obviously, it was at the um, the Giant Stadium, which um, did not look the greatest because you know like all those upper decks weren't filled and they closed off the upper decks and stuff like that um probably um i probably would have just said you know like hey apparently you know the um the, the soccer team the new york um whatever they're called the new york red bulls or whatever they're called out there in mls even though mls is trash uh, apparently you know couldn't vince couldn't get the field ready for you know uh, the red for like out there, you know, in um, the Red Bulls arena. They couldn't get that field ready, so they were just like, okay, let's just use uh, MetLife Stadium. Let's just use, um, let's just use, you know, the Giants, the Jet Stadium out there, and we'll just close off the upper decks. But it looked, it looked okay. It looked okay. Um, and, man, let me tell you, that defense for the Guardians was absolutely ruthless, let me tell you. Just, just fantastic, fantastic defense. Um, for the Vipers, it's real simple. Got to fix that offensive line. You know, uh, it was not protecting Aaron Murray all that well. Quentin Flowers came in a couple times during the game. He really didn't do anything um, of note at all. And in fact, he, he threw a couple passes. That was about it. And he ran five times, three, four yards. That was about it. Nothing real doing there. And then the second game, the game that just concluded, um, and I'm already disappointed because it was the St. Louis Battlehawks coming in to Globe Life Park out in Arlington, Texas, which really also doesn't look too great. Um, like, I know they like repurposed the um, ballpark, the old bar park where the Rangers used to play, and now they're playing at a stadium that's across the street. Um, but it did not look the greatest on um, Clove Light Park. It, it looked alright, but it didn't look the greatest as far as like you know like where the fans and stuff were. Um, probably you know I would have just said, hey, let's play at the um, the Pizza Hut Park or whatever whatever it's called, whatever the um, whatever FC Dallas's field is called. Now I would have went on out to Frisco. It's, did something like that, or I just would, you know, hey, let's go call up the star in Frisco. Um, but then again, I don't think, yeah, yeah, it does, it does host high school football games. So I think the, I think the, um, 
the star would have worked a lot better than Glove Light Park. That's just me. Um, but what a disappointment. Hal Mummy and his patented air raid offense. Very small playbook. As we all know, the air raid is basically it's just a mishmash of a, wide, a variety of formations with only about a few plays far in between that you can run out of basically any formation you want to. And it did not look too pretty. Philip Nelson was the starter. No Eric Dungy at all. Landry Jones had an injury, but he'll apparently be back next week. Um, but yeah, just way too many short throws by the Renegades today. Uh, when Philip Nelson did throw it, it was like I had counted on my hands. It was three times that he threw it deep. One of them got picked off. The other two were just bad throws, overthrown. But Jordan Tom, uh, he did absolutely wonderful today. Let me tell you, 20 for 27, 209 yards, and you know, and you know the Battlehawks ran for over 100 yards, 180 yards, I think, something like that. Ran for 180 yards, and it was just man, it was great seeing them, you know, run the ball like that. Um, Russell caught the only touchdown, and you know, it just was not looking too great for the Renegades. I mean, look, I mean, the passing line for Philip Nelson goes like this 33 for 42, 209 yards, and an interception. Absolutely disgusting, disgusting type of play, disgusting. Disgusting football. If you're gonna put up numbers like forty, like forty-two passes, and you only get two hundred nine yards, you shouldn't even be quarterback right now. You shouldn't, you, you shouldn't have, you know, just like man. I mean, there's no way that shallow crosses and, and, and throws to the running backs along the sideline. I mean, there was a couple screens thrown in there, but it was mostly just very short passes that didn't. That, that did not have anything to do with anything. I mean, yeah, there was at least one other time that Nelson threw it deep uh, again, and it just was it was absolutely perfect. The receiver just couldn't get it at all. But the Battlehawks, they did a lot better, um, executed a lot better. They, it was a tight game all the way to the end. Um, both these games today were not as interesting as yesterday's. Uh, in my estimation, in my opinion, um, they weren't as good as yesterday's games, at the very least. Or at least the first game yesterday. Um, the second game kind of got out of hand. But, uh, yeah. You know, the Guardians just dominated that first game of the doubleheader today. And the second one was really just a battle of defenses for most of it. Apparently, you know, Dallas is the favorite to win the championship. Uh, as far as, you know, like booking odds and stuff like that goes, I don't pay attention to gambling, so I don't care about gambling. But as long as, you know, we get things together next week and everything like that goes, and the teams that lost this week have also have to get it together. And by we, I mean I'm a Dallas Renegades fan. So Renegades stands, rise up, and let's get this get thing together next week. Um, but, yeah. That'll basically just about do it tomorrow or the day after or something like that. We'll be talking uh, as far as, you know, the rest, the rest of the week goes on this channel. Um, the Water Dogs, Premier Lacrosse League, so we're going to do some Premier Lacrosse League stuff here. Um, the, 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 the expansion draft is on the 12th. I'm going to talk about that as we go along. Or after, or after it's over, everything like that. Um, the draft um, tonight. We're also gonna do some um, talk about some college basketball because we got to. We got to talk about it. It's very important now. We're getting into the grind, and then um, previews for next week's XFL games. It's gonna be a couple of gonna be a bunch of goodies next week. As we know, for the XFL, there's gonna be a the All-Star game is this weekend, so there will be no NBA coverage this week, unfortunately. Kind of tragic. Um, and it's not like the NBA had anything to do this week anyway. This is the XFL's time. Um, 
and then we'll talk about college basketball, of course, to end off the week. So tomorrow or somewhere, somewhere along the line, it'll be an XFL preview, and then the Water Dog stuff, and then college basketball previews and stuff like that, and then everything else after that. So with that being said, hope you guys had a great week watching the XFL weekend, watching the XFL. I know I did. It was a fun, fun time, and I can't wait to do this next week. So, and with that being said, everybody, Big Boy Sports is heading on out, and we'll see you guys tomorrow or the day after or something like that, but with more XFL content anyway. <laughs>